Hi everyone and welcome back to The Journey. Today as you can see we're going to be talking about IBS also known as irritable bowel syndrome and let's just go ahead and get started. All right. So the most common GI condition is this condition right here, IBS. The exact cause is unknown. It happens more in women than it does in men and these are some factors that can associate with IBS. So it either help to contribute or help to irritate um, the syndrome that's already occurring, okay? So you have hereditary, which of course, genetics, we can't change anything about our genetics. Um, psychological stress, okay? Depression and anxiety. We have diet high in fat, stimulating or irritating foods, um, alcohol consumption and smoking. And then here we have change in mobility may be related to the serotonin levels that's within the body that also helps to aid in the assistance of um, intestinal mobility, okay? Which is why here we have um, psychological stress because when you are um, having stress or um, psycho you know, psychological problems or different conditions or so, there's an imbalance of different um, receptor sites and different um, factors as far as like your dopamine and um, your serotonin, different types of levels that you have in your body that are responsible for certain things. So when you are you know, um, psychologically stressed, it does play a part with the serotonin levels as well, which is probably one of the reasons why you'll see as an associating factor with IBS, okay? Because it deals with the same um, serotonin um, aspect of it, all right? And then you have your change from infections or other inflammatory disorders, um, whether they are vascular and metabolic disturbances or so, you will see a change in the intestinal mobility, all right? So all these different things plays the factors of um, why you will see a person with IBS or contribute to the irritation of the IBS. So the clinical signs and symptoms that we have, also known as just um, signs and symptoms and your nursing assessment, right? So they're going to be your primary symptoms that you're going to see. This is what's going to occur more often. This is what people are going to complain about, right? It's just alteration in bowel patterns, okay? So either they're going to have diarrhea, constipation, or they can have both. So those are going to be your main type of things that you will see. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about the nursing interventions. Okay, so we're going to provide patient and family education. You want to make sure that they're having a good dietary habit, and you want to make sure that they're avoiding their food triggers. What are their food triggers? They will know as they go on, okay? So what, they, what you want to recommend is for them to keep a food diary because, you know, certain things that you used to be able to eat, all of a sudden now your stomach is not um, being able to digest it as well or it's um, irritating your stomach lining or so. So for some people that may be ice cream, um, that may be milk or so because, again, if you already have the lactate, um, lactose intolerant, you know, that will already um, ir irritate the bowels. So if you know you wasn't um, that before and all of a sudden you are now, you want to kind of keep a note of that in your diary and say, okay, you know, last time I drank milk or last time I, I had ice cream, you know, it really messed me up. You know, my stomach was irritating, it, you know, vomiting, you know, diarrhea, whatever the case may be, right? And you notice that it happens each time you eat ice cream or, you know, whatever it is that you're eating, then you want to put that down as your food trigger so then that way you know, hey, I need to avoid this. I used to be able to eat it, but now I need to avoid it because it's just only going to cause harm rather than good. Okay, so you want to keep a food diary, and then you want to eat at a regular time, and you want to chew slowly. So whatever time you normally eat, you want to keep your body on a pattern, on a rhythm. Okay, so that way it knows, okay, at 8 o'clock, I know I'm going to expect something to eat. At 12, that's, you know, another thing, whatever it may be. So whatever timing you do, just try to make it a regular time, okay, not eating late at night or so, and the next thing you know, irritate your bowels or, you know, things like that. Um, also, fluid should not be given with meals because it's only going to cause abdominal distension. So either um, right after you finish your meal, then you go ahead and you drink something, or if you want to drink something before because um, you're, you're really thirsty or so, but never at the same time, okay? So, uh, again, avoid, and then, and then you want to have stress management, okay? So we know why... We need to have stress management, right? Because of the serotonin level, they want to make sure that they're balanced because they do aid in GI mobility. So whether you can do relaxation techniques or yoga or exercise, whatever it may be, you know, just go ahead and, you know, make sure that you're managing your stress properly. You know, for some ladies, it may be a spa, going to the spa again, a really good massage, right? Whatever it may be to help you manage your stress, go ahead and do those things especially if you're experiencing 
IBS, okay? Also, for more detailed um, treatments as far as like different medications or those sort of things, um, go ahead and, and look at the description box right below and you will find all the information you need to find about IBS. Again, it's a very short, short topic, um, but it is your most common thing that you will see in the GI tract. It's kind of vague if you been kind of listening along, you know, but, you know, it's just irritation of the bowels, right? And then because of these triggers or different things like that. So this is what the nursing intervention is, is mainly going to be focused on. The questions are mostly going to be geared to, you know, chewing slowly, keeping a food diary, which is why I put this here. If you just want to know a little extra information, right, because you're anal like me, just want to just make sure you cover all bases, just go ahead and look in the description box below and you'll find, um, other treatments that they do for IBS, but these are the more so things that you will see uh, when it comes to testing the type of questions that they like to ask as far as nursing. So again, thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Don't hesitate. Don't be shy. If you have any comments, leave it in the comment section below. Give it a thumbs up. Share this video if you thought that this was very helpful. And again, thank you for coming on this journey.